sat through a focus group with voters in um, Wirral West constituency. So, and I'm here with um, our North of England correspondent, Andy Bounds. Andy, what did you make of what everyone was saying? I thought it was fascinating. There's a, there's a lot of disgruntlement, discontent out there. And you would argue that possibly people are unhappy with the country and they're looking for a change. But actually, when asked about a change, they're really looking for security. And that conservative message of safe pair of hands, don't muck up what we've gone through, seems to really resonate with lots of people in the room. Uh, some of them had personal experience of tough times over the last few years, and they all seem to think that things were on the up, which also helps the Conservatives. Did you feel the mood shifting as people started talking to each other? I know there were quite a few who were undecided at the beginning, one who'd never voted before. Yeah, I, I do think so. I mean, I mean, there was one lady, obviously, who de you know, declared she'd switched from, from Labour to Conservative, despite losing her job as a result of Conservative cuts, um, which is quite remarkable. But despite their support, their leaning towards the Conservatives, mm. they were very critical of the Conservative candidate here. What did you make of what they were saying? Can you give us a couple of examples as well of what they said? Yeah, I mean, somebody said she wasn't very... Uh, Esther McVeigh is a local candidate here. Um, she's fought very hard to get this seat, but there was, a, there was an impression she was quite high-handed. Uh, she didn't particularly relate well to people. Uh, I think somebody said that a young person said she didn't care about young people. Um, so it's quite strong language, and a lot of people seem to be, if they were voting that way, might even vote against, despite that, rather than because of that. And um, did you get the impression from the group in there that um, Wirral West is a cognizant, um, has a cognizant voter base? They know about the policies, or are they going by impressions? Yeah, it's a good question. They'd all had an awful lot of literature. Uh, because they're all in a, in a marginal constituency. But only one of them, I think one or two of them knew the name of the Labour candidate, obviously a few of them knew the Liberal Democrat candidate. Uh, they seem to be quite engaged, but more via national media actually, and, and the BBC and, and Newsnight and programmes like that, rather than maybe what was happening around them um, and, and what was being done locally and, and in the news locally. And do you think there's something that Esther McVeigh could take away from this if she was watching the video? I think she was watching this. She'd be very impressed with you know, their perception of David Cameron, which came across very strongly. He seemed to win out as a leader against uh, Ed Miliband. But, you know, that she probably is seen, it did seem as though she was seen as quite heartless and, and, and you know, with that job of cutting benefits, that maybe she was doing a necessary job, but not particularly a job that people liked. They didn't really feel uh, a particular affinity towards her. So probably getting out there and, and meeting people would be a, a good idea. And what about Margaret Greenwood? Yeah, I mean, the, the one person who encountered her found her very, very nice, but the fact was a lot of people hadn't, hadn't encountered her, didn't know her name was. Um, the other fascinating thing was there was, there was very little talk of the, low, the, the smaller parties, the Liberal Democrats, the Greens. Yeah. People seemed quite well disposed towards the Liberal Democrats, but again, they hadn't really heard anything from them. And the question is, you know, is there, is there a tacit coalition agreement on some of these marginal seats? Or is it simply that Lib Dems have to concentrate on ones they think they can win and therefore they can't spare any resources here? I mean, one person even said their campaign literature was unprofessional and people thought it was a bit of a joke. Thanks very much, Andy. Okay, thank you.